Hey everyone, Steve here from My Crypto World. Today we're going to cover off three stories, one relating to Theta and the new governance change uh, chain. Uh, we're going to talk about Bitcoin, where one of our top analysts believes Bitcoin's going in the near future. We're also going to talk about the metaverse and where uh, all the money is going. All that right after this. Okay, so we're kicking off today with a, a good story regarding a T-drop. This is something that a lot of the Theta supporters, um, Theta holders have been waiting for in the marketplace. Um, so it's great to see that this has actually been launched and is ready to go now. Uh, the article kicks off with T-drop on-chain governance launches on the Theta mainnet, paving the way for the essentialized governance of the Theta blockchain. As with all of these, I'm just going to paraphrase and read through parts of that I think are the most important. Uh, otherwise, we'll be here for hours reading article after article. Uh, it kicks off with, We are thrilled to announce that the T-Drop governance site is released on the Theta mainnet. This is the first step in T-Drop stakers directly governing how the T-Drop token rewards and its other parameters like liquidity mining uh, and it will serve as the test bed for on-chain governance for the Theta token and the Theta protocol itself. Uh, this is critically important to decentralizing the protocol, giving power to the token holders, and making Theta an equitable blockchain for all. Um, each user's voting rights for a given T-Drop proposal will be equal to their share of the stake T-Drop as a percentage of the total T-Drop staked. You can access the T-Drop governance site here, and it's got a link to that. Um, I'll try to remember to link this article below so you can read that and explore that for yourself. I won't be doing that in this article. So essentially what it's talking about is that for the first time, users or holders of uh, the T-Drop uh, can actually vote on the parameters and the changes that Theta are going to make to their mainnet. Um, it could be anything from very basic stuff to very high-end things. Um, and this uh, also allows not just the big players like Sony and Google uh, to vote heavily on what they think their opinion should be about the way the blockchain should be developed, but also individuals like uh, you know small token holders. As long as you maintain the minimum token requirement, um, you can also have a say and a vote in where you think the governance should be for moving forward for the um, for the network. Now the article goes through uh, exactly how to do this if you're a, a T-Drop holder. I won't go into it exactly, but step number one is delegate the voting power from the Theta wallet through to your MetaMask wallet. Um, if you don't have a MetaMask wallet set up for the Theta tokens, um, you can uh, just Google my uh, uh, YouTube channel and I've got a, a, an article in there that I'll read through and take you through step-by-step -step process of how to do that. So you actually have to uh, transfer your Theta wallet where you've got your T-Drop stored and um, flip that over to your MetaMask wallet. Number two, you vote for a proposal. Now, the note that to vote on a proposal, you need to delegate your votes to MetaMask wallet before the proposal was created. So that's really important. So if you're somebody who wants to get involved in all of this, you can't go onto the mainnet site, have a look at a proposal and go, I want to vote on that. I'm now going to change my, um, my, my wallet from the Theta wallet over to MetaMask. Because the proposal was launched before you did transfer, you cannot vote on that. You have to wait for the next one to come up. So what it's really doing is encouraging people uh, to get onto uh, the MetaMask wallet system sooner rather than later, just in the odd chance that you might find uh, 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 something important that you want to vote on in the future. It's uh, not going to work if you haven't transferred your stuff over to MetaMask yet. Now this part here is pretty important. The voting period, once a proposal is submitted, it can be voted on by T-Drop stakers, by default, the voting period is set to 100,800 blocks, which is roughly seven days. So it's a seven day period for all the votes to be uh, allocated and counted. Vote queuing after the voting period, anyone can queue their proposal through the dashboard uh, user interface, UI. Uh, proposal ex execution, two days after the proposal is queued, anyone can execute the proposal through the dashboard. The smart contract will count the votes, decide if an execution criteria is met, and if yes, the proposal will be executed. So two important things to note out of from that is that what is the proposal, how, how can that meet the execution criteria? Well, they've got two options here. Number one, uh, they receive more yes votes and no votes. That's obviously a no brainer. Uh, but also they receive at least 500 million yes votes. So even if they get more yes votes and no, but they don't reach that 500 million, dollar, uh, 500 million mark, um, the proposal will not go forward. 
And they've given an example here on this article of what it might look like. For example, double the NFT liquidity mining reward. Now that's a no brainer because there's probably not anyone who holds uh, Theta is gonna vote against that. Um, we all would like uh, a better liquidity mining reward for um, doing the NFTs. Um, so you can see here, the limit is 500 million. Uh, uh, at the moment oh, on this particular snapshot they've given, there's no one has cast a vote. And then down the bottom here, you can see that uh, this vote was cast. Uh, they received 9 billion, uh, 92 million 684 votes uh, for the Theta Network to double the NFT liquidity mining reward, and they had zero votes against it. So in that example, that vote would have been moved forward and um, token holders would have received an uh, increase in their NFT and liquidity mining rewards. Now, step number three is you can create your own proposal as well. So if you've got somebody, if you're you know, really up to date with blockchain um, technology and you know uh, the protocols and what the, um, what the, what the, I guess the, the governance needs, what the token needs, what the users might require. Um, you can also put together your own proposal of what you see fit to de be developed onto the Theta blockchain network as well. And you can simply just create your own proposal. It gives you indicators of how to go about doing that. Uh, I guess a walkthrough on how to do that and how to activate that proposal once you've submitted it uh, and then wait for your, um, for the voting to happen. So that's, as I said, it's very good news because it gives users a real voice in the blockchain technology, um, not just the large players within the market or even the developers themselves. Um, so well done to Theta for getting that organized. Our next uh, article, just quickly, is regarding uh, Bitcoin. A billionaire, Tim Draper, doubles down on a $250,000 Bitcoin prediction, and here is his timeline. So venture capital investor Tim Draper is reasserting his prediction that the price of Bitcoin will break well into the six figures over the coming months. Draper says in a new interview that by the end of this year or early next year, Bitcoin will hit a price of $250,000. Now this actually is really good news because um, if I'm right in what my analysis was, you'll, if for those that are subscribing to this channel a few days ago, I listed uh, why I thought we had hit the bottom and so many coins are just bouncing along a really strong resistance line at the moment. It's almost like they're ready to launch. So if I'm right and that couples with this article, then we might be looking at really good figures before the end of the year. The venture capital investor who made early bets on Coinbase, Hotmail, Skype, Tesla, and Twitter says the catalyst will be women, in, women increasing the Bitcoin, uh, using Bitcoin to shop. One thing that'll possibly likely happen, and he says, I don't know when exactly it will happen, is that the women will start using Bitcoin. Uh, it was one in 14 Bitcoin holders that were women, and now it's something like one in six. So we're getting a lot more female investors into the crypto space, and they're realizing that they can actually save a lot of money by using tokens like Bitcoin um, and Bitcoin Cash for that example, um, to actually go and do the shopping and purchases and actually save money on the transaction fees. Um, and the way it's going to be even is women in control of about, as they, uh, sorry, and the way it's going to be even is women control about 80% of the retail spending and retailers haven't yet realized that they can save 2% and they usually run on very thin margins. So that might like double their profits. They can save 2% just by accepting Bitcoin instead of taking a bank issued credit card. And that can change everything. All of a sudden, all the women will have Bitcoin wallets and they'll be buying things like with Bitcoin. And you're gonna see a Bitcoin price that'll just blow right through my $250,000 estimate. So he's really bullish on that. Um, as uh, we've said in other articles and, and videos that I've done, we are so early into this space yet, we actually haven't seen um, where it's gonna go. I believe we're in a $10 trillion market. Um, and at the moment, we're just floating above $1 trillion. So we've got a long way to go. Uh, the billionaire investor also predicts that NFTs uh, and decentralized finance uh, sectors will get adopted at the enterprise and institutional levels. We've also spoken about this in other videos and I've explained to you at the moment, NFTs are really all about artwork and that's all everyone's looking at um, is what the NFTs are, how much money value can we make out of it, what the intrinsic value is, what the price is gonna go up of a certain NFT. But there's a real user case for NFTs as part of a business solution. For example, um, actually it goes into examples in this article, but uh, as an example, uh, all your receipts, um, your driver's license, your Medicare or healthcare cards, your pension cards can all be stored on the blockchain network. 
Um, the the tax office, um, depending on where you are in the world or the IRA or whatever it might be uh, where you are living, uh, may want to see um, proof of uh, token um, or proof of uh, a record, a receipt, or things like that. Um, the IRA can get and the tax office can get uh, bombarded with dodgy receipts and false claims on your tax returns every year. And I'm certainly certain they get their fair share of all of that. Well, by putting things on the blockchain where it can't be altered, it can verify that you actually did have an expense that you need to claim off your uh, taxable income. Things like that will start to drive um, NFT tokens uh, in the real um, in a real business sense. Um, now, here we go. It goes on to say, uh, I've noticed that generally technologies are first taken up by consumers and then they move to enterprise. I think you'll start seeing NFTs go from consumer to enterprise where now your diploma and your driver's license and your employment history and your medical records and all that stuff will go onto an NFT. And that'll be the sort of new direction for NFTs. So um, certainly Tim Draper's got a, a very strong view of where Bitcoin will be going. I certainly do as well. And there are tons of other people on the uh, on the net uh, and on YouTube at the moment that are predicting uh, a very big price movement in the near future. Finally, I just wanted to touch base with this because um, a lot of the uh, the gaming uh, coins like Engine, Wax, Sandbox, uh, Decentraland have really been hit hard in this last um, downward spiral that we're going through at the moment. Um, but I wanted to highlight this because I still hold uh, many of those um, coins and I still believe in many of the projects that the, those coins are backing. Uh, but this article goes on to say that $3 billion flows into Metaverse and Web3 Gaming this month alone. Um, this was actually an article that was a, oh, it's a week old, so it was back in May. Um, as A16Z tips in $600 million. Now, A16Z is a venture capitalist firm. I think they're based in um, Silicon Valley. The article goes on to say that venture capital firm um, A16Z has launched a $600 million fund dedicated to gaming startups with a focus on Web3, saying it believes games, infrastructure, and technologies will be the key building blocks of the metaverse. Dubbed Games Fund One, the, game will, the fund will invest in three main areas, gaming studios, consumer applications, which support player communities, uh, with Discord used as an example, and of course, gaming infrastructure providers, which is probably one of the most important things I'm gonna get right first. Uh, the A16Z team said the coming metaverse will be built by game uh, built by gaming games companies using games technologies, and that the industry has already solved many of the problems that needed to be solved to create the metaverse in the first place. It believes games will become the most dominant way people will spend their time. The move by A16Z marks nearly three billion committed by venture capitalist funds and gaming industry giants into Web3 gaming or metaverse projects since mid-April. So we're not talking that long ago. The crash had already happened, and um, people are, are flocking to um, flocking to the metaverse areas uh, with a lot of money to to build this um, this area up. A venture firm White Star Capital raised 120 million for its decentralized finance and gaming focused fund along with a $200 million allocation to blockchain gaming projects by Framework Ventures, both taking in place in April 2022. Uh, Metaverse projects are also gaining massive sums from the gaming industry titans. Last month, Epic Games creator of the most popular Fortnite series title raised $2 billion to create a Metaverse with funding from Sony and Lego. So, you know, um, if you're holding Metaverse tokens such as the Central Land Sandbox and a few of the others that are out there, um, and you've seen, they've probably been hit some of the hardest, I believe, over the last couple of months and weeks. Um, it's a good news story for that because there is a lot of money flowing into that space. And I believe it's only gonna be a matter of time um, before those uh, coins also take off again. Again, not financial advice, just my financial opinion. Since they've been hit the hardest, I kind of think they might be the last to move. Um, you know, I think you'll start seeing Ethereum and Bitcoin kick off first. Uh, some of the other governing tokens like um, uh, uh, ADA, Cardano, uh, and all that will probably kick off second. And then you've got your uh, Metaverse ones, which will kick off last. But um, that's the way I see things anyway. Uh, that's it for today. Uh, take care of yourself and each other, and we'll speak to you in the, the next video. Cheers.